Hmm? You second. Me. Ahead of me? I feel like I've done a lot of growing up the Bro, last year. Yeah, he's the most open-minded person in this group. Easily. And he's not even close. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a distant second to you. Anyway, do you guys remember that song? You old, You're grow- a distant second to me. I no, I don't think that's true. I think that's true. Mo thinks old just because I go pride. Ooh. That don't mean shit, bro. That is facts. I don't know what to tell you guys. You can still be- Someone went pride. Someone went pride. They're yeah. my people. By the way, yeah. You can, can still be something? very ignorant. Can I just say something? Going yeah. pride or not? I'm not ignorant, man. No, no, I didn't say, oh, okay. I didn't mean it in that sense. Say, that's what I'm saying. saying. Anyway. I my feelings. I'm like, how are we friends if I'm ignorant? Bro, you know what I mean. Nah, I know, I know. Bro, by the way, yeah. Um, I was watching Hardball and I forgot how great that oh, song of, um, was. Oh, the film or the song? The, I was, like I was watching a clip of the film oh. and I forgot how great that song was. Which one? Strike one. Oops, sang out out. Strike two. Right before your eyes pitch free, this one's to the wall. Who did that song? Ain't no game. Little Bow Wow, Little Zane. Little Sammy. And Little Wayne. Little Sammy. Because Zane had a. Let's not like Little Zane. Had, first time little Zane had a couple bangers. Let's not do that, though. He's had like two bangers as well. Your little. Okay. Little Zane had a couple bangers. What was the one with him on 112? Um. Calling me. Calling me. How'd it go, though? Say my name. Calling me. Calling me. You can't do an intro without you, man, singing along. Say my name. What's the intro? You recorded? It's some recording. Oh, right, shit. You could have told us. What's good world? Welcome to another episode of the Rhymes Like Dimes podcast with me, Yemi, Mohammed, and Peter. We're here again, guys. How are we doing? Back from Cyprus. Yeah, man. What's going on? What's going, on? What's going, going on? on? What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, all good. God is good. <laughs> God is good all the time, man. Thank you. God is good. Since <laughs> we're going to make it a regular thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Welcome, guys. Um, safe, man. This is episode 14. Um, it is. Thank you once again for everyone who's listened up until this point. Um, Much appreciated. We see you and we appreciate you. Um, gentlemen, how was Cyprus? Uh, shout out to Chris and Mia, man. That shit was perfect. Yeah, man. Big up Chris and Mia. That, that was one of the best weddings I've been to. It's the best wedding I've been to. Like, I can't. Yeah, it was perfect. It was yeah. A, it was, shout I, out to those I, guys. I can't, I'm trying to find another word, but like perfect, just everything just went. The weather was yeah, dope. Yeah, like nothing bad. The hospitality was amazing. Mm, like, even fam. shout out both their families as well, man. Like, yeah, shout know, out to both their families. You man. know what I'm saying? They like, treated us really nicely, made us feel welcome. Showed us around. And shout out everyone that was just there, man. Like we had a, had a great time, man. Um, Some burnt like a bitch, but yeah. It's, no, um, I loved it, man. Like, it, was, it was great. It was great, man. Yeah, man. It was a bit emotional. Did you cry? No, I didn't cry, but like. I think Mo came close though. Did I? Did I? Yeah, man. For real? No, I'm joking. I'm about to see. <laughs> like, wait, when? But like knowing me as long as I've known her, Chris, as long as I've known him, like bruv, that shit was amazing, man. Was it hot? Was it sunny? Yeah, it was boiling, but like I didn't sweat. You didn't swear. Nah, I was one of the few guys that did my t-shirt was listening. Hmm. Yeah, neither did I, man. We just, you know, we held it down, man. So it's a swag film. <laughs> Speaking of the swag, yo, Mo, Mo went in, you know, I can't even oh, lie. My <laughs> like, no, I saw the videos. I yo, saw the pictures, bro. If I talk, I got a big head here, but I killed it, fam. <laughs> I killed it, fam. I, but what's, fam? You got a big head, though. Man had an ankle show in both nights, fam. Cankles, bro. What, fam? And then me and, me and what was it? Me and Peter's on the dance floor the whole night for the yeah, first night. we killed night. it. They're set on the dance floor Saucy boys. Night. How was your week? Uh, week was cool. <laughs> Sorry, safe. It's Kevin. Not for because I wasn't there. Um, yeah, week was good. I mean, I didn't do much to be honest. Uh, you only met gigs and Madlib. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk course. about that. Talk about what that. Do you mean? Of course, of course. We're gonna of course. forget that. Forgot all about that. Um, so basically, yeah. Um, Madlib and Freddie Gibbs <laughs> were in London uh, the week before last for um, a boiler room. It was in Hackney, and I managed to get a pick with Madlib. And the performance was really good. Um, it was Madlib DJing and Gibbs just performing. Um, he was very funny. He had a lot of anecdotes. He said, if you're going to sell crack, sell good crack, which was funny. Him. Very humble guy. Um, and yeah, man, he's always been, well, for a while, he's been my favorite producer ever. So it's good to meet the guy. And this is the second time I've seen him. Uh, I met him. So Wait, that was great. Yeah, I met him like last year as well. Where? In Brixton. I'm pretty sure I said this on the podcast one day. There Maybe like the day, like the week after it happened. Oh, okay, man. Yeah, man. Second time. And then um, meeting Gigs. I mean, this is not new for me because I've actually interviewed him before. But, Sorry. Ooh. Ooh. You interviewed Gigs? 
Yeah, time ago. Yeah, you did. Who is this guy, bro? <laughs> Who is this guy? I'm a very, like... Well connected. I'm even well connected. I'm a respected journalist, my guys. Piss off. Oh, talk that shit. I'm a respected journalist. I'm a respected journalist. Yeah, let me talk my shit for a little bit. Talk your shit. You know me. (laughs) And if they don't know, know me. You're not of importance. uh, Fam, and if you don't know, you'll know. You'll know. One day it all makes sense. Shout out to Common. Anyway. Oh my God. Talk your shit, fam. We were at, me and my my work colleagues, we were at a St. John's listening party. Um, (laughs) All right. All right. I don't think he's acting like he's so many Bro, do you know what I'm saying? Just because you man don't live this life, innit? Just relax. And just, you know, so those that don't know, St. John is an artist signed to Rock Nation. Is he signed to Rock Nation? Yes. Oh, yeah, of course he was, because Biggs was there. Um, For those that know, don't know, Biggs, formerly of Rockefeller fame. Yes, no, formerly of Rockefeller fame. Someone else was there, and I'll wait for you to see him as well. Um, who else was there? Casanova. Casanova was there. Um, For those that don't know, Casanova's a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> Casanova, Casanova's a rapper. We first bumped. That was cool. Did you really? Uh, yeah. Oh shit. Fist bumped. Fist bumped. He, yes. like, he looks like he's good people's. Yeah, it was cool. Although he didn't look at me in the face when he did the fist bump. I didn't know how to feel about that. He's at a first, big man though, man. He'll punch anyone up, fam. Is what it is. Exactly. And then we were leaving um the venue and my boss drunkenly shouted, Giggs. And then we looked to the right and Giggs was just there in a the car talking on the phone. Um I got a selfie with him. And while I was taking the selfie, I was trying to jig his memory as to where he'd seen me before, because he didn't remember. And then he finally remembered that I'd interviewed him. And did he clock you? And he's like, where do I remember you from? No, I was like, I, I was like, we've actually met before. Um, I interviewed you for Nike's uh, Love and Beats of London advert. And he was like, he looked at me and I explained a little bit more. And I was like, while I was taking the picture and he was like, oh yeah, yeah cool, safe. But he was on his phone the whole time. So when did you interview him? Huh? When? 2017. Okay. Anyway, yeah. shout out Mad Libs, shout out Gigs. Shout out um, to both of them, man. Both dope shout artists in, the, in their own right. All right, guys, Two let's goals. move. Yeah, 100%. Um, in very different ways. Right, let's get cracking with the first topic. And this is a topic that we wanted to talk about last week, but obviously we were too busy talking about... The great 2000s. The great 2000s. Um, But a person we did mention in that topic was 50 Cent. And we've been having this conversation um, in amongst ourselves for a while. And the question that I kind of wanted to pose to everyone here is, as far as 50 Cent goes, was he the last great gangster rapper? Now, obviously, when he came out, he killed the game. Um, obviously, Get Rich or Die Trying is a classic. Went diamond, sold 10 million copies. Um, real got a gangster shit. And it kind of signaled what we would now kind of see or some people would see in some corners as like the end of gangster rap as we knew it from like its peak from when NWA started going to all the way down to like Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, um, everyone um, in the West Coast, to the East Coast as well. So in many ways, people see it as like 50 Cent's arrival as like the cutoff period for when Gangster Rap was last really great. So I guess I want to know if that's true and if you might think that way. And um, I guess it'll be looking into a lot more of what 50's done since then and during the time as well. So Before we like really dive into it. I think it's important to even lay out what is gangster rap because I've been going back and forth with this in my head and I think I alluded to some of this in the group chat as well. The difference between gangster rap and street rap. We talked about this. Yeah. I was going to ask. I was going to... I think we need to kind of set that show. I think it all comes from the street and I think I tried to... When I was talking about gangster rap in my mind, I tried to like compare it to movies and I think I said to you, Mo... Like, think of um, The Godfather versus Paid in Full. Which one more do you think of as a gangster flick? Oh, this was in Cyprus. That you was was that in Cyprus? Yeah. yeah. Which more do you think of as a gangster flick? Say that again. Um, Paid in Full yeah. or Godfather? Godfather. All right, cool. So for me, 50, what 50 Cent was talking about and what he did was more Paid in Full. So street. Yeah. So, but does gangster rap come under street rap? Is it a part of street rap or is street rap well, gangster? Gangster rap, this is Wikipedia I'm reading from. Gangster rap is a style of hip hop characterized by themes and lyrics that generally emphasize the gangster, OG, and thug life lifestyle. Uh, many gangster rap artists openly boast of their association with various active street gangs as part of the artistic image, with the Crips and Bloods being the most commonly represented. So, by that definition, it's kind of all, str- it's kind of all street. It kind of all comes from the streets. And I guess. When you're talking about gangster rap, it's about 
how much musicality, how much gloss you put onto it. Um, maybe certain topics that you talk about as well, like. And there's obviously mafioso rap as well from the early, exactly. from the from the nineties. People like Raekwon and Jay Z. But that falls that. into the um, gangster rap subgenre for me. I feel like sh- ah, it's tough, man. I feel, I feel like they're one. I feel of like the with same. street rap, is it because I feel like one of the same. I've got a question for you guys. Are you saying is the difference? The reason why we look at is the reason why we look at Godfather as. Would you look at Godfather as gangster? Yeah, and paid it full street. Yeah, is that because there's a, the race factor? Um, at first I thought maybe. Do you see what I'm saying? No. But, but now that I think about it, though, maybe they all are street. But that's my point. But because like, if you if, if I start and it was one of the same thing. If I tomorrow decide, you know what, I want to start selling weed. Um, you man will start looking at me like I'm a roadman. Um, the, the more I start selling it, I guess the more I maybe started to start being perceived as somewhat of a gangster. If I start, you know, um, holding guns or whatever, so. I think it kind of also depends on the level. Yeah, maybe it's, it's the level any, of it as well, and maybe the fantasy of it as well. With yeah. Fifty Cent, I think it was street because it was probably at a low level, even though he was doing whatever he was doing, selling drugs and all of that. Whereas with like you know someone like a Rick Ross, he talks about it from a much more grander scale. So like import export. Yeah, more fantasy. More, more criminal, so more B-side. Yeah. So is it believability? But you believe 50. I think that's a part of it too. But we were calling it NWA gangster rap. We weren't calling it street rap. You were definitely calling it gangster rap. Or maybe we were calling it, I mean, to be fair, they said rap. you're now listening to the strength of street knowledge. So I guess, I think gangster and street go one and one. I think there's a lot of overlap. I think eventually gangster rap became street rap in a sense that gangster rap was its own genre. And now there are a lot more street rappers that aren't necessarily gangsters. Yeah. So I think from NWA's day to 50 Cent's day, there was a little more overlap because you weren't really sure where the lines were. Yeah. Whereas now I think gangster rap has kind of gone into like a river, meandering, yeah, meandering, into That's his street word of rap. the day, guys. That's his word of the Into day. street rap. And I think street rap might have taken over gangster rap as the whole overarching thing. I, I, don't, think, I, don't, I don't think gangster rap exists anymore. I, I think, think it's still street, does. I think it's all street rap. I think, uh, Who's a gangster rapper? I think Rick Ross is a gangster rapper. Rick Ross is a liar. Rick Ross is a liar. <laughs> he's a liar rapper. He's a, he's a liar. He's a, liar he's a great liar rapper. Liar, 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 liar he's rap. He's the best liar rapper of all time, by the way. Liar rap should be a genre. <laughs> There's in no one that's lied better than Rick Ross. Like, in life. I mean, Vinny lies. Uh, listen, keep him away from my family. But, like, my point is, I look at everyone, like, who's coming up now? The Dave East? Street, street rapper. Street, yeah. Um, who else really. Is Griselda gangster rap or street rap? Street rap, like, to me. Benny. Backpack street rap. West Guy Gun. That's what West Side, West Side yeah. Gun's street okay. to me as well. I feel like the whole team's street. I think there's a fantasy in there that like makes me feel like one is more like, gangster than the other. What like, about like, like Meek's street to me? Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't say Meek is yeah. um, Meek's not gangster, gangster rap, but Meek's the peak of street. So right, is gangster rap purely then just a subject matter? Yeah, but I, I, to me, I might be different to you guys. This point in life now, it's one of the same. I think the subject matter. This point, 2019 yeah. rap today, it's not. You, there's no divide anymore. Yeah. The game is a street rapper. Yeah. There's no real I can't yeah, there's no substitute anymore, man. To me, it's one of the same. But when he came like, out, they were saying, yo, he's bringing back gangster rap. And I, I think would, it, I think it's because he came from like a, a gang banging background. Yeah. You know what I'm then, saying? So there's, YG, there's that as well. YG's he was a former gang member as well. What's YG? He's gangster he's, rap too, though. Is he gangster rap or street rap? I think if you're gonna do gangster rap, like the Wikipedia definition, you Kind of have to have you. You gotta live that gang life. You gotta be part of a gang. So then you got. You know what I'm saying. I got a question then. So then was Nipsey not the last gate script best gangster rapper? I mean, he came from Crips, right? Was he still yeah, a Crip? Yeah, he was a sick. But then it also depends on what you consider to be great then, because um, Grammy nominated, fine. Number one selling album, fine. Uh, yeah, arguably statistics mainly one of the biggest rapper then live at the then no, passing. Then no, I can't say that Nipsey was the last great gangster rapper. No, who was you um, say? I think. Just for, you know, the, the whole overarching subject, I'm going to say that street rap and gangster rap, we're going to merge them into one just to avoid confusion. But that's different. And I, and that's, I, different. that's different though. To what I'm mean? saying. No, you're saying based on what 
I'm um, saying if we separate the two, which I don't want to. So if we're going by the actual definition of gangster rap, yeah. the origin, yeah. then you're saying Nipsey's the last great one. Yeah, but if I don't we're, know if, I don't if know if we're merging the two, then I can name. No, nah, then, I mean, nah, then, then Nipsey's not. Game is. Because Game did the numbers, he's got the catalogue, he but made then, the impact. But then Nipsey didn't. Unfo- unfortunately, Nipsey did not. I feel you. But then to me, and this is not Wikipedia, I've got another bit where believability plays a factor to me to just if we're just going off but that's that's yeah, but, but that's believability's not got nothing to do with you whether you're great talk, if we're talking to the wider audience then yeah definitely the game your believability's got nothing to do with whether you're great fair we're talking about purely the music just right, fair enough then it would be the game it has to be game that's a good shot but if we're gonna like because this is about 50 cents so if we're merging gangster, gangster rap and street rap which I think that's what's happening in 2019 um, then you could argue that 50 cent was I don't know any last on that level yeah, I don't. I can't remember the last street slash gangster rapper that came out, influenced the East Coast the way he did, impacted the East Coast the way he did, sold as much as he did. I don't think anyone had that it, run as well. Where anyone, and just the way he came in the game in such a unique way as well. Like you can't deny like how to rob. Yeah. Obviously, his whole story getting shot. Guess who's back? Power the dollar. All those mixtapes. He buried. A, he buried the whole record label. He buried the whole record label. You know, shout out your boy Ja Rule. Um, Ja. And like he beefed, with, he's beefed with everybody. Beefed with everybody, killed a lot of them. He, he lost one. Well, he never lost, but he never beat one. Well, I mean, he, he, did, never, he, he never beat Rick Ross. He never beat the game either. He didn't beat game Ross. either. Yeah, he didn't beat the game. Or well, Jarrell. Jarrell's the main lead, the only one, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. But then that's he, 50's the last 50, so that makes any sense. No, I, I think there have been a that. few that have tried afterwards. No, I'm talking about think... coming the game like that, done what he's done. Attempted to do his um his Not, template. You know, I'm just saying, come in the game and done what he's done. Has there been another 50 period? Forget as far as numbers? Yeah. Like that. No. Yeah, that's my point. Like he's... But he, but you're not going to get those type of numbers ever again. Yeah. Especially from like, a street rapper. Was he an anomaly? Was he an anomaly? Yeah. In a lot of ways, yeah. I don't know any... Maybe like Dr. Dre. I don't know how many he's... How much like copies the Chronic sold. Like overall, just like over time. But yeah. You happen to go platinum? platinum it's different diamond? with Dre though. It's different with Dre. Dre wasn't writing his own music. 50 Cent. It was Gangster Rap though. But for what 50 done is different, man. It was Gangster Rap though. To come with Get Rich just like that. Mm. But then, yeah, it's different. But then and his he, first, he his kind first of... song was, he, as soon as, fifty 50's album was, Get Rich is a gangster album to a certain extent. Well, no, I, think it's out. I, think, it's, I think that's the last great one too. It's out and out, a Gangster yeah. Rap album. But the, I think that's yeah. the last great Gangster Rap album. Um, do you class the game as one? Because um, the game's first. Well, the documentary. Was the documentary was. I was that was really good, but it wasn't. Get it's rich. not better. Get rich. I'm just saying. If we're if it, is it a great album? If it it's is a, a very great, very good album. It's, it's to me that's it's a, not a classic. It's his best album to me. In games catalog, it will be or it is a classic. We're gonna stop doing that. We're gonna stop. It's not classic. That. Okay, then. All right, then. Yeah, if we're talking based <laughs> yeah. on the conversation we had with Rich. Then nah. It's definitely not a classic. Then it's not a classic. No, it's then not, I don't not, think it's a classic either. Get Rich is a really classic. great, it's a really good album. Whereas nah. Get Rich is a classic. Whereas Get Rich is a certified classic. Just for what it meant for hip hop, the numbers it did, the fact that it was the arrival of like such an important figure in hip hop since then, like it meant so many things, which the game, like the documentary, yeah, it introduced the game and stuff, but it's not really the same. So what made 50 so great? For, Man. You, for you guys, I think. Do you want to go first? No, go ahead. Um, with for me, it's um, a few things. So it was the authenticity with him. So like, I feel like we could tell someone if they're not authentic very quick. Like Rick Ross, we could tell he's not authentic. So it's hard to explain what I mean. I feel like when you're authentic, people buy into you. He was believable. And he, yeah, he was believable. He had style, and he was a chameleon. I feel like Rick, Fifty Cent is a chameleon. You could put Fifty Cent in the hood, and he will vibe. Then you put him in. Good Morning America and he'll also do well there which is why I feel people bought into him as well because he could sell to the white he was groups. convincing at the yeah. early stages bro 50 was 50 was a chameleon bro uh, from early not, uh, 50's film came out like three years four years into his career what does that mean five, like what I'm saying is he was in the club like 50 was oh, 50 crossed over really quickly so when you say chameleon you mean the ability to make different types of music that appeal to different well, in the and feel crossover. comfortable whoever's talking to you do you know what I mean? No. In the club, like in the he club could go to like the breakfast club, be comfortable. Then he could go to Good Morning America. But that came later. I, think, I don't know if that came early. early I feel like that but, came early with but, him. But, nah. But, yeah. I don't know he if was on early. Jonathan Ross early. What, from what, those times? in the club times? Yeah, 50 was on Jonathan Ross and all of them early, wasn't he? I might be bugging. I don't know. I mean, he's a well-spoken guy. So, I mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't put it against him. I wouldn't put it, I wouldn't say 
that he couldn't do it at that early stage. And let's be honest, he done well because of the, his tracks as well that he came out with. If I'm just being honest, he kind of, everything that he mocked Jarrell yeah, I mean, for. Yeah, I mean, he fronted the market in a lot of ways. Yeah, because everything he talked Jarrell, well, he was mocking Jarrell for 50 did. That what? This whole singing, making music. He was mocking Jarrell for that. Like, don't be evil, but you, uh, gangsters don't sing. That was his whole premise against Jarrell. Yeah, but then he soon realised that. That's a winning formula. It's a winning formula. So maybe and that's it, why he's done well as well. Do you know what I mean? So the fact that he was a chameleon, yeah, the music um, that was a huge part of why you so. feel like he was great. And so. the music was amazing. And the music was amazing. The music was amazing. Right. Like front to back, Get, Get What You Die Trying is a phenomenal album. Um, I mean, I don't, I, for me, it's not a skippable track. Um, and it's just a ride, man. He takes you, he takes you into his world. He takes you for a ride and you're hooked from, yeah. from the first song, man. I need a cheat code behind him. Dr. Dre and Eminem. Yeah. yeah. Thought that too. He had, he had yeah, great he backing had, as well. Yeah, he had a whole machine behind him. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And this is Not when, saying that, yeah, not me. Yeah, and Dr. Dre was kind of in his second wind of finding like an amazing artist right. after he had found M. And 50 Cent was that guy, man. I mean, so after Get Rich, so we've acknowledged that like, all right, that was a fantastic album. What well, Classic album. He's probably still his best album. Um, and after that album, he was seen as, you know, a gangster rap savior, great. After the second album, which was called The Massacre, was he still great? I think, yeah. I think after the massacre, he was still great. I think it started to dip for him with Curtis. Why? Because he then became a caricature of himself. He became someone who didn't... The music was, was declining. There was the whole sales thing with Kanye. And he said he'd retire if... Kanye outsold him. If Kanye outsold him, which it did, and he did not. So authenticity... And believability took a took a knockout blow there, um, and it? I think well maybe not a knockout blow, but it took a dent. I think it took a dent. I think if you're gonna, and again, it, it does depend on how much you invest in the artist. But if an artist is telling me that they're gonna do something, if they're so adamant that they're gonna do something as drastic as that after something as trivial as like album sales competition, and then they don't do it, I'm gonna look at you in a certain way. Right. Um, I agree. Again, I agree. the music was on the decline. He was venturing out into other businesses, so maybe music wasn't as much of the priority. So I think that's when the dip was. I think with the massacre, he was still very much about the music, even if the music wasn't as good as Get Richard Die Trying. But it's hard to top or even equal something like that. So the massacre, I think, was a solid album, but it was never going to reach those heights. Right. He couldn't, because the first album is always going to be where you're the most hungry, where you're the most dedicated, where everything comes together. Second album, as we all know, there's a sophomore slump, which I don't think necessarily he had, but for something like a Get Rich or Die Trying, you can't really compare the massacre to that because it's like, bro, what are we doing here, bro? I don't, it was impossible for him to reach that height. I'm saying. So maybe he set the bar very high for himself and he mm. couldn't get there. He couldn't like, he couldn't keep to it. He couldn't keep to it. Only a, only a few artists can. I, th I thought the massacre was really good. I thought it was a really good album. How do you good think album. he fell often? Um, why or how? Like, why... Either way, um, do you, what do you think? I think, I think to his fall off. I think the way, the the direction in which the game was going, um, as far as mainstream gangster rap wasn't that as appealing as it once was. Um, I think, like similar to what Yemi said, I think Curtis was like the time in which he was on the decline just because of what happened with Kanye. He had threatened to retire if he didn't sell more than Kanye West. Like going against Kanye in itself was a mistake. Yeah, four hundred percent. But at that moment, not only did Fifty Cent lose, but I felt like Gangsta Rap lost as well, because mm. um, you could see like for for Kanye to sell more clearly amongst the masses, Kanye's type of music, as far as his subject matter, um, was more appealing to rap fans at that time. It was no more about you know how many people you can shoot the gangster shit, the street shit. I think Kanye was the shift. Yeah, I never people, people, didn't, people, didn't, people didn't want to hear that anymore, clearly, I mean, which is why... I think Kanye was the shift in yeah, that. Yeah, I've never ever thought... I think as soon as Kanye yeah. came in the scene, it was a rap for gangster. Yeah, I've actually so, never thought about that. Yeah, like, I mean, on a commercial level... Because, no, but I feel you're right. I feel like that's when it was like the pretty, like the fly. So, you're yeah. right, yeah, because that's... Yeah, right. on a mainstream level, the, you had no more like, you know, street rappers selling. After that, it was pretty much done, which is why I think this topic makes sense for him to be called the last great. Gangster rapper. Do you think we'll ever see another street rapper reach? Nah. No. So I had, nah, man. The game's no. completely different now. Completely no. different, man. Who's like, who even we'll sells like that? Who's no. the biggest street rapper now? YG? Biggest street rapper? Yeah. YG? Mainstream. Who's mainstream. even, what street rappers are mainstream? That, and sell? Um, 
I'm not gonna say Snoop Dogg Street, but he, he can he can dip he, in he and out. Of that like that, yeah, but he I don't even count him. Though. But Where's what selling though? They drop an album today. People are buying it. No one. I don't think so. In the mainstream, no one's um, really doing that anymore. Pusha T's street rapper, but I don't think he can ever do numbers like that. Nah, Damn decent numbers at Daytona though. But, but he's never going to reach but, the, lads, those are, those, those, But no one does 50s numbers anymore. I'm just talking about, is anyone going to be... Would a street rapper ever be the number one rapper in the world anymore? But we're not saying he needs to I don't think so. Can a street rapper... This is my main question. Can a street rapper ever be the number one rapper in the world anymore? No. Yeah. Oh, they can in the world, but... I mean, commercially wise. Commercial wise. No. Like 50 was undisputed number one rapper in the world. Can a street rapper ever get be the number one undisputed? You if you're going to be, who that? do you consider? Sorry, I mean, who do you consider to be the the top street rappers at the moment? Um, Pusher. Okay. YG. But what's okay. this in terms of? Just in terms of sales, notoriety, notoriety sales, music, awards. Who are your like? So Rick Ross is in that conversation. Rick Rick, it might be pushing Pusha number T, one. Right? It YG. might be pushing number one right now. Pusher might be number one. All right, right now. cool. Um, then to answer your question, then nah. If it's based on that, no. Uh, gangster rap has kind of become, even though there are loads of street rappers and street rappers, well, it's niche now. It's not the main money maker that it was back in the nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. I think now it's been taken over by things like emo rap, by things like I don't know, like pop rap, stuff of that nature. Does that know you guys? Um, yeah. One day to, I really want yeah, to. I don't. I didn't mean to cut you off. By the way, but does that know you guys? Uh, no, nah, um, not at all. Because hip hop evolves. Pete? We can't keep relying. We can't keep being on the same boat all the time. And hip hop, by its very nature, is cyclical. And we're always focusing on what's new, what's hot, what's fresh. Gangster rap had its time in the sun. I mean, I still enjoy like all types of of rap, man. I like the fact there are so many different subgenres. And I, one day, I really want us to talk about like the different subgenres as well. Um, it doesn't annoy me because of, I still choose to listen to what I choose to listen to. Um, as I get older. Um, the sh the gangster rap isn't as appealing, um, just because of where I am in life. But from time to time, I still enjoy listening to it. I think with people like Westside Gun and you know the Griselda rappers, like um, it's more so their production as opposed to just their raps that pull me in. Um, but no, I still I still enjoy it. I, I don't think it's not it's not annoying to me at all. Um, I think but, there's room for everything. There's always going to be a place for gangster rap, but their place in it's place in the mainstream. Ended with 50. I agree. I think. I agree with that premise. I mean, someone like me, you guys know how much of a fan I am of street rap. I think that's the one I listen, that's the subgenre I might listen to the most. And I feel like everyone knows. So it's a bit annoying. That because I've obviously I still like Davies might be my, one of my favorite rappers right now that I listen to. Mm. But do I ever think someone like Davies is gonna be the number one rapper in the world? I think it's done for that, man. I, but I mean, but but you say that, but someone like a Davies, they still have the potential to make a smash song. So if they can do that then that changes the tide completely. But is he making a smash hit doing the things that he usually does, talking nah, about the same stuff? He, I think he still would though. He was probably sprinkle it in, but he would not as much because that's what 50 done within the club. This Before I mean. in the club, all the mixtapes and that, we know what the content was. It was all street shit, always yeah, drug yeah, doing, always shooting up, blah, blah, all of that stuff. But he's still, even within the club, he still was talking a tad bit of crud, but... It so was, you're saying you pulled it was them in a jingle with that song. though, innit? So you pulled them in with that song and then... Yeah, but I think you have to do that to, to appeal to the masses. I've got a question for you guys. You love your questions, Before you? you ask yeah. that. So something like a... Something <laughs> no, like... <I> do <laughs> so I stop? No, no, I don't. don't stop. Something like... So, so, what about... um? Was it YG that did the song My Nigga? Yeah. Amazing song. It was a hit. It definitely was a hit. I think in the mainstream sense, it might have been a bit of a hit. Yeah, it was. But was that YG really? Or was that his version of like an in the club? Where that was his like, version of in the club. So does Davies basically need someone like a, does, needs, does the Davies yeah, need like an in the a, club? Yeah, he needs it because if you think about it, the reason why people stopped listening to YG was he gave us my nigga, but then if he, and I loved his first album. My bitches will tell you my crazy life is a great album to me. But then it's like yo, people don't want to listen to Bicking Back Being Bull. I mean I do, but they made the audience warm. But I got a question for you guys: When Takashi Six Nine was out, where would you say he was one of the biggest rappers? Yeah. And was he not just solely doing street music? He was until he wasn't. So stuff like Fifi, is that yeah. street music? No. It's something like- I see, but he came into the scene doing- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gummo was street. Yeah. And that's why 50 Cent is so important because he was 100% street. It wasn't an image thing. Yes, he had the image, but the music was street. With, Takashi, with Takashi, yeah, but no, he was still talking crud on that. You can, trust me. Um, 
But with Takashi, it was more the image, who was behind him. But then in the actual music, it wasn't necessarily that. Whereas with 50, it you was 100% yeah, yeah, that. You know? Because even on 21 Questions, there was a tad bit of crud on that. He was in jail. It was, a, it was a love song. He was in jail. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? He was in jail in that song. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's why I sound like a 50 is like mad important, man. I feel you. I thought Takashi 6 And the fact that we say that Dave East needs a, in the club, um, my nigga for, was YG's in the club, just shows you how much of an impact 50 was to gangster rap and gangster rappers. And it kind of shows you that the kind of, the buck, the buck kind of sort of ends with him because even he took gangster rap to new levels that gangster rap inevitably hasn't been able to get back to. And now we're saying that people who do come through on this gangster rap shit need that sort of buzz. I feel you. Essentially. I feel you. For them to even be considered like mainstream enough to, to have something, maybe not to the indie club's level because we're not going to do that, but something that's kind of like visible in it. But yeah, someone like, I think, Styles P, I thought he had the potential to maybe had a, like, have some mainstream bangers because when he came up with um, I Get High All The Time, that was like a smash as far as I'm concerned. So And right on the regular. Those were two big songs. Yeah, so I feel like he had the potential, but I just don't know if he I, he just couldn't do it. Who else had the potential? Um I thought Rick Ross. Like despite I think he's, what, he despite it. the believability. I feel like he fulfilled it. Um well, right if we're comparing him to someone like a fifty, then No, but that that's I know it's not that's fair, unfair. Is it? Like yeah. let's just take fifty out of it. I feel like Rick Ross reached his But does Rick Ross have a smash hit? Ashton Every day I'm hustling? smash. Stay scheming was a smash. If we're comparing I think there was a minor hit though. Um, Ashton Martin to me wasn't a minor hit. I think that was a minor hit, man. Yeah, was, I think it was a minor hit. I don't think he, he doesn't have a smash. Like, In the club, it's a smash. Ross, to me, hit the heights he yeah, wanted to hit. That's because you're a Rick Ross fan. No, but I feel like even just. I oh, Fair enough. You're a Rick Ross fan. Yeah. And I don't think the mainstream is. The, but the that's mainstream what is definitely not looking I'm, at Rick If Ross I'm a Rick Ross fan and I believe he hit the heights he hit. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's bigger than you, bro. Like, we've got to look at the masses. I'm saying, you mean why he never crossed over to like an everyday rap fan? Yeah. Or like, not even just a rap fan, just like. White people. Does he want that? Bro, this doesn't matter if he wants it. Bro, bro, this convo is about 50, right? We're yeah. talking about 50. We're talking about um, him reaching certain heights. You're like, why? Yemi just asked me who else I felt had the potential to do it. Oh, you think Rick Cross was one of them? Based on what 50 did, Rick, you, Rick Cross had the potential, but okay, he didn't do you, it. I feel you. I feel you know what I'm you, saying? You, um, DMX might also be in that conversation, but mm. he was more street than gangster to me. And he, I feel like he, he went. He, he left Earth like on those first like three hours. I was going to say that. I was going to say DMX. Yeah, no, he, he left Earth, but um, he's more street than gangster though, isn't it? So I guess it, if we're merging the two together, <laughs> yeah, then, yeah. then 50 Cent came after DMX. So 50's still the last one, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, you can't, yeah, he came yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, you feel me? So yeah, man. But DMX, yeah, definitely, definitely fulfilled what he was supposed to do. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I just, with 50 though, like, I just don't know if he was great for long enough. He That's wasn't. always my thing. He wasn't. He wasn't. He was great for he two years, max. Two, but, three years, max. Which is why, again, going back to last week, the Jarrell thing. That's like, so why I gave it to Jarrell. 50's run wasn't long enough for me. But 50 was still writing for other people, bro. But then we're just taking his music into account, not what he wrote. Nah, but if we're looking at the totality of it, you can't just take just his music. Yeah, but we we have to look at what Lloyd Banks... the time he's in your face? Based on last, um, the last episode, yes. But based on this conversation, but we're looking at the saying, totality of 50. In, Everything that right, he did. Enough. But I don't think he was... I don't think 50 should have had a longer run than he had. Then again, 50 still relevant. To but, it doesn't matter. Just but then you can count the... Lloyd Banks' run, Young Bucks' run, Games' run, Tony Ayo's run. I don't even know two of them. In had the grand a run. scheme of things, when it comes to 50 Cent's run, it really doesn't matter how long it was because of what happened during that run. This guy had a game, sneakers. He did in three years what most rappers couldn't do in 20. Look, and that's, it, yeah, and that's the it, difference. He was worth like 250, like 250 million, like two years. Bro, and that's why him and Jar ain't close. Oh, it's not close at all. Because if we're talking musically, then I, I hear what you're saying. But they're not but, close at all. They're not close at all. But based on everything that you've just said, that's why yeah, 50 was like, yeah, no, he, he, you can't even compare him to Jaro because he was doing so much. Yeah. So the run doesn't necessarily, the, the, the number of years in your run doesn't necessarily matter. It's what you do when you're at the top. Yeah. Has anyone that, done that much in that short space of time? I don't think so, man. Maybe Kendrick? No, Since then? No, no, no. But in the sense of like, he's had a run where he's at the top, kind of the top of the game and he's recognised as such. But obviously he's not reaching the same commercial yeah, numbers. Because he had, he, Kendrick's even sharing the success with people. Your 50 literally was not sharing the success with anybody. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Kendrick's got cold Drake with him. 
No, 50 generally did not have any body Because I don't think touching. anyone was selling like 50 back then. Because there was a story that Jay-Z told one time when he was on The Breakfast Club. And I think he was warning all his artists. He was like, listen, 50 Cent's getting ready to drop. I think this was after In The Club, but get rich. Sweat. It wasn't out yet. He told Bleak. He told Young Chris. He told Beans. He's like, listen, you man, flood the streets. Because 50 is about to drop. And when he drops, everything's going to shut down. And I don't think there's been that sort of impact since I mean, them I think f- Drake might be doing it now, but if we're not, talking as far as the gangster rapper, yeah, no, no one, no 50's one. the last one, man. And I feel like Drake's run is a bit, it's not really similar, and he's far from a gangster, too. Yeah, and he's, yeah, 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 he's of course. a bit of a culture vulture. He a bitch, he speaks Spanish fluently. Since when, yo, I love Drake, man. Cheat code, you know what I mean? At least 50 kept the rule of himself, and he does duck face, <laughs> 50 would have burked you in the face, fam. <laughs> this guy's singing in Spanish. Drake would have been, yeah, you like that song, though. Yeah, I do. I there you go. <laughs> yeah, you do be singing. You do, you do you do dance to that. I love iguanas. Hey man, there was a couple of nice girls there, man. Hey man, hundred percent. So we so we're in agreement then. Like he was the last great gangster rapper for what he was able to do for gangster rap and rap as a whole. Like he, we, and the thing is, like for him, for us to call him the last great gangster rapper, it might not even do justice to him because he might be the greatest. He might be. That's a different convo, man. Yeah, of course. Yo, that's, but yeah, that's a whole number. That's, m- that's more than numbers. He might be. I'm just saying he might be. Because yeah. you've got a few people that you got Ice Cube that he does a few. And you've got a few that had um, it's a more, more good albums than it's 50 did. It's definitely a debate. Yeah, definitely yeah a debate. for sure. And by no means is this my opinion. That's definitely a debate though. But it's definitely a debate. Yeah. We'll talk about we it. We need to do a UK one as well. Because I feel like Giggs was the Giggs is the last one. Talk about that one. We'll I mean, I disagree with that. Maybe we'll do We're going to talk about that. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Big up Giggs, This episode made me has made me dislike Kanye a little bit, but we'll, that's what it is. It is what it is. Why? I feel you. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, bro. I'm not going to lie. Oh, right. Ruined, I feel you. Because he ruined gangster rap. How you dare, how dare you, fam? I mean, he was making better music, so. I mean, I don't think he was. I'm a gangster rap fan. Like, I, can't, I can't put it to words, bro. Like, going from a place right now, I'm, I am a gangster no, rap fan. I, I, I like what Kanye did, man. Like, you might know that about me. Like, Kiss is in my top five. X is in my top seven. Like, I can't help it. I feel you. I like that gutter shit. I, mean, so I don't, don't like that whole swag. Yeah, nah, man. I don't like not, ASAP. With Kanye, what, don't say that. Not it like wasn't that. just a swag. Not Kanye, I'm talking about the ASAP Rockies. The, nah, I don't listen to them man like that. I, I think sw- what Kanye represented was being yourself. It was the alternative. So still, I think that's very are important. We, are, are we still Kanye fans in 2020? For yes. Interview? All right. Jesus is I'm king, coming soon. I'm still up in the air with Kanye. You know? you I'm still up in the air with Kanye. But yeah. Can I ask you a question? Is 50 Cent still a character of himself? Yes. Or is that him? Look at his I think Instagram. that's him. No, but is that him? Because I feel like it's him now. I feel like he's still a caricature of himself even when he's being himself. Look at the way he insults people. That's him, I feel like, at this point now. Yeah, I feel like 50, he, honestly, he, he is... He goes far, man. He goes, like, further, he goes further than he needs to sometimes, But man. we don't... Bruv, when you get shot nine times, there's a certain amount of fuck that you just don't have anymore. <laughs> Fine. But you can still be a caricature of yourself. All right, fair enough. When you're posting pictures of, like, Wendy Williams next to, like, I don't know, a gremlin... <laughs> That's not nice. See what Even though I don't like, I don't care for her. You see what he did last night? What did he, what did he, he do last night? He a picture of Chris Brown, how many he sold. And he's like, this guy's better than Michael Jackson because he touched a little boy's beauty holes. All right. Michael Jackson had nothing to do with nothing. Okay. That's a great segue into this next topic too though, man. Yeah, well, great segue to the next topic. Thank you, Mo. I try guys, I try. So the next topic we wanted to talk about was um, obviously artists aren't perfect human beings. And sometimes they will do things outside of the music that will make us consider even continuing to listen to their music anyway. So obvious examples are Kelly, um, potentially Michael Jackson, allegedly, um, and people of that nature. So I guess the question that I have for you guys is, what is our moral compass when it comes to listening to artists like these? And where does our morality stand with listening to them, knowing what they do outside of music is fucking terrible. Uh, who wants to go first? Well, let's go to the R. Kelly fan, Mohammed. Yeah, I think that's a Yo, great way to start, Well, man. wait, let me not lie here. I was an R. Kelly fan. Was? I don't, yeah, I don't, you guys, I don't listen to R. Kelly anymore. Um, um, it's a weird one, man, because I feel like I'm a hypocrite when it comes to where my moral compass is. Because, so I've completely cancelled R. Kelly. I don't listen to R. Kelly anymore. But it'll be ignorant of me not to believe Michael Jackson never dipped his toes in the water. Hmm. Like... Do I think Michael Jackson touched kids allegedly? Nah, but do I think he at least dabbled in something? Yeah, but then do I now listen to Michael Jackson if I believe that? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a weird one. Because R. Kelly's a flat out, flat out case. We know that he done it. Cool. 
I could cancel him. But if my mind is telling me, no. Come on, man. We're not going there, bro. The one day we that get to talk about R. Kelly, yeah. That, that, was, one, that, yo, was, that brilliant, was perfect. That, that, that was, was brilliant. That was 10 10. That was a good <laughs> But like, the one day we get to talk about R. Kelly, I got these jokes are going to fly, boy. But anyway, so yeah, like I was saying, I know R. Kelly done it. So I don't listen to him. But am I a hypocrite if I believe Michael Jackson done something and I still listen? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But then also, um, say Bobby Schmurder. Bobby Schmurder's in jail for like, and all of his boys for murder, whatever. So anyway, yeah. If I listen to Bobby Schmurder and his people or him may, might have killed someone or any other rapper, and I listen to that rapper even though he's committing murder, is that worse than listening to a Peter Fast? That's up to you to determine. Though. That's my point. I don't know where my moral compass is. I'll be honest with you. Right. I just feel like R. Kelly took it too far. Right. I'm not, not even too far. I can't fuck with a pedophile. If you touch little kids and it's proven, this I'm is not. It. This it's, is it. it's, there's still two ways, but I'm not rocking with you. You know what it is? I think it's because we're so used to rappers talking about killing people in their raps and then when they actually do it, it's like, oh, well, he actually lives his raps. Whereas something like pedophilia or something like rape, something like, you know, sex trafficking, it hits a little bit different because that's not things that we're used to. And those are things that outside of the raps, we've been told and we've been taught that that's fucking wrong. Even though we know murder's wrong, the fact that we listen to so much shit that can makes us so like desensitized to it, it's not as bad. So there's levels to it. I think in the case of R. Kelly, I've never really, I never really listened to him anyway. So him being guilty of all this shit, even though he's not that guilty yet, but he's guilty. Him being guilty of all these things just confirms to me that I will never listen to this man again. I don't listen to Michael Jackson much either, and I, I believe he did it. Would you listen to Michael Jackson? If he, well, we're never going to find out if he actually did it. But if he did do it, never listen to him again. But what, why is it different? So if you, my only question is, sorry, I don't know if you're going to say something. But my only question is, if you know, if you believe he did it and it's proven that he done it, isn't that one of the same thing though? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. So therefore, does it make a difference? If you believe Michael Jackson done it, you believe Michael Jackson done it. Yeah. So are we fucked for then listening to him just because he never got proven in court? Well, that's up to you. If I believe, Do you get what I'm saying though? Yeah, but if I believe he's done it and I don't listen to him anyway. But I'm would you listen, listen to him? You don't listen to MJ? I don't really, I don't, not in my spare time. Only when I'm, I'm at parties or whatever. But, so you've never listened to just, uh, that's, I've no, I mean, I did, I did, but I don't now. So you've stopped listening to Michael Jackson essentially? Yeah. So you haven't always felt he did it? More I, recently? I haven't like always he... felt he did it. I've, I've, I've felt he did it maybe for like the last couple of years. And since then, it's a case of me not actively looking to listen to him at all. Make, and it's probably been influenced by that. So, I'm keeping the same energy in that respect. Are you though? And I'm going to, the reason why I say that is because MJ aside, R. Kelly aside, Nas allegedly put hands on Khalees. We clearly are against abuse against women. Abuse against anybody. It's, yes, it's alleged. Well, I said alleged like I'm American. Alleged. Um, <laughs> that's how you know I've been listening to too much like oh, American murder stuff, rap. right? That's Mad. It, no. um, <laughs> but like, is that being a bit hypocritical? Well, why? Because why? The, the energy isn't being kept with yeah, someone like a Nas. Cool, but we have to we have to um, put an asterisk on Nas's case because Khalees allegedly beat him up too. And um, also with that, isn't it? That that's doesn't, a, that's, it's this, it's, I feel you, but it's, it's not the same. Of course it's not the same. If, if, if a girl punched me in my face and I punched her back, it's, it's two not different the punches. same. I'm, I know she should not lay hands on me, but obviously me laying hands on her is going to be seen way worse than her punching me. 100%. They're both yeah, wrong, yeah, but course. men, we're, you know, we're bigger, we're stronger. So it's way different. But a woman, I'm not going to get into all that. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I feel like everyone should keep their hands to each other. I get what you're saying. Yeah, that's, but that's just right. get, yeah, but like, with Nas though, like it's, that, that's it's the same thing though. with Rihanna and Chris Brown. Yeah, allegedly Rihanna was abusive to him. But the Nas thing was different. Nas is alleged. Like, there's no two ways about. It. We don't know. So you said alleged as well. Like, <laughs> alleged. <laughs> alleged. You're better. Me. I'm not correcting myself. Industry. Nas was alleged. <laughs> like, we don't know if he done it or not. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. whether you like it or not, that can never be, until that gets. But that's an MJ though, bro. But then no MJ, bro. That's. Do you think MJ did it? I don't know if MJ did it. Do I think he doubled the... Yeah, I'm going to tell you why. why. It's yeah. not. I don't believe MJ I'm did tell you why it. So not. that's why it's the same as Nas. Do I, I don't but know. The same you. way people... Sorry. I don't know if he done it. I just feel like he might have... The same yeah. way people have come out and said, yo, MJ did this. is the same way Khalees came out and said, yo, Nas did this. It's the exact same, bro. But... It's just reason, that MJ's bigger. But the reason why it's not the same to me is because in the case of Nas, because Khalees hit him 
And I know that we get men get looked at as monsters more so if we hit a woman. But that's a reaction to something. I don't know the full story. So you think it's different to that of an MJ? 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's different in, because like, I fully believe that he, that Michael Jackson did it. Yeah. And I have then not, I don't listen to his music. And I will continue to not listen to his music as long as I believe that's the case. With Nas, I don't believe that he actively went out of his way to hit Khalees in a way that he's the abuser, he's a monster, all that shit. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm thinking there wasn't any real, of course there was malice to it, but I don't think there was the same level. You don't think he just like, goes around beating up women? I think huh? it. You don't think he goes around beating up women? Yeah. Even, not, if it's, yeah but even if it's just one, that's still awful. But that's Chris Brown. I'm a Chris Brown fan. I still you, listen to that's Chris Brown. Do you consider yourself a hypocrite though? Um, at times, yeah. But then sure. wait, I've got a question. If, oh, you're right, I always say that. <laughs> for sure. If Rihanna's forgiven him and Rihanna's the one that he put hands on, why can't we just rock forgive him for it then? We can. So then are we wrong for listening to Chris Brown? But we won't. No, but then if the abuser, oh, sorry, if the victim is also... Yeah. Say, forgave, forgave yeah. Chris Brown. Yeah. We live in a climate cool. where... And then I forgive him because she has, and now I can listen to him. Am yeah, I wrong not, for that? That's not the climate. No, not at all. You're not wrong. You're not bro. wrong, but that's not the climate. The but cli I feel like the climate is quick to cancel black people if we're really going to get into but it. That's it. That's it. Because people still listen to Elvis. Well, Elvis, 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 Elvis married a kid. But yeah. I feel like cancel culture is ours, though. I think it's black culture. Yeah, we're I don't quick to kill each other. Which is why someone like an Elvis, his song still ring. Yeah, because we're quick to kill each other. And you got so that's a, and that's people, a whole people, conversation. And people will be quick to justify that it was a sign of the times. That's what the people did back then and shit like that. I get what you mean about being hypocritical, but it does go down to your belief system. Yeah. If you believe that this person is guilty or has done something that you personally cannot agree with on a on a moral level, then you should like in theory, you shouldn't be listening to that person. But with Nas, because I believe that it was an abuse, well, it was they all throwing hands on each other. So it's like, it's a little different. Um, yeah, but then it's not that you shouldn't be listening to them because it, I think it still comes down to, you know, your moral compass. But I think at the same time, you also need to look at whether you're able to separate the art from the artist. Mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you're able to do that with no problems, then you're not doing anything wrong whatsoever. Um, I don't think it's, an, it's I don't think it's a reflection on you as a person if you're listening to someone that cheats on their girl, someone that beats up their girl, yeah. um, but you you love their music. Miles Davis was a serial physical abuser of his partners. I love his music. John Coltrane was heavily into drugs. I love his music. I'm not gonna go and hit women, and I'm not gonna take drugs. Do you still listen to their music? One hundred percent, I do. So I think it just depends. At times I'm able to separate the artist from the art, but at times I'm not. In R. Kelly's case, I can't. That's the thing though with me, it's weird. But that goes down to the level of to the level of like um, atrocity that he's doing, right? Let me hear D'Angelo came out and was touching kids. Bruv, I'm burning my um I'm not okay, burning's extreme, but I'm probably not listening to his music. I'll be I it's a like I've thought this to R. Kelly, but have I got R. Kelly on my phone? Yeah. Do I go out with you and listen to R. Kelly? No, but and I fully if believe... R. Kelly comes on my playlist, I'm, right. I'm not going to lie. I don't know if I'm going to click next, just being completely honest with you guys. I don't know. It very much, yeah. Like I said before, I think it depends on the doubt, level of abuses that the person in question has done. Someone like a Kanye, who we were so quick, well, not us, but well, some of us. That society was so quick to cancel last year. Mo was quick to cancel him. Yes, I was. I put my hand up. Because of his thoughts on Trump and his thoughts on the MAGA hat and shit like that. That is something you could probably, if you wanted to, easily separate the art from the artist from because you're not going to Kanye's art for his political beliefs. You're going because it's amazing art and amazing music. With someone like an R. Kelly, or not actually, no, let me go step by step. With someone like a Nas, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, because, yeah, you got to factor in the fact that, obviously, Khalees was abusive as well, hope, allegedly. Um, and in that respect, it kind of absolves Nas because, in a weird way, because... He wasn't the only one doing it. It was very much tit for tat. So you're able to separate it a little bit better. What well, I am personally. When we get to people like Michael Jackson, R. Kelly, and people like of that stature who've done allegedly done things like so heinous, it's harder. Mm. It's harder because that is something that just is flat out wrong. Mm. Like no matter what you, no matter what way you look at it, 
no matter what way you look at. Because at least you can look at abuse and look at the other side and feel like, well, what did they do? Like Kelly was doing this thing with underage girls. Yeah. Michael Jackson was allegedly doing this with underage kids. It's different. I agree. But it's, 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 all, it's all really difficult, man. Because even with like, you know, the street content, that's even quite hard as well. I, was, I, I went through a period where like, I was really struggling to like reconcile that with myself, man. Like, um, you know, listening to all these street rappers talking about killing people and essentially killing black people, um, but still kind of seeing myself as this pro-black individual. And I really battled with that for a long time. I really battled with, you know, should I be listening to this gangster rap? Should I be listening to the street shit? Because is it not a reflection of me in a sense? You know, we've spoken about it briefly. Like, you know, sometimes music can affect you whether you know it or not. Like Subconsciously or unconsciously, whatever. Um, and yeah, I mean, I went through a period where I was seriously like trying to move away from that street shit. I didn't want to hear it because I was worried. No, I wasn't worried about how it would affect me, but I was worried about whether I should even be listening to it. Should I be listening to a music that um, not promotes, but I guess glorifies talking about glorifies like you know violence and and killing of my own people so i struggled with that for a while man and then i got to a point where you know learning how to separate the artist from the art and separating myself from the art as well it can just be entertainment to me but it doesn't have to affect me similar to movies isn't it yeah you know what I'm saying? Because I don't think movies, there's any of these conversations. Like you watch Terminator, my man's killing God knows what, everything and everyone in sight. But you don't hear them kind of having the um, the thought or the debates of, oh no, I shouldn't be watching this. Am I a bad person? So, it's, uh, But it's different with music though, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, 100%. And it is, I mean, again, depending on who you listen to, like again, like you say, it is entertainment at the end of the day. Like, People make music based on their experiences, especially when it comes to the street shit. So it kind of makes it okay because, okay, they've lived this life. And even though they're portraying it in their raps, they don't it can go either way. It's kind of like the drill debate. Like, does the music influence what's going on in the streets? Mm. Um, and can you separate the art from what is going on in, 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 in wider culture? So it, it very much depends on your threshold. Like if you fundamentally are okay with consuming these messages, knowing that you aren't about that life, you don't necessarily believe in it, but you like the pageantry. Like, I love Pusha T. Does that mean I want to cook yeah. up Coke? Fam, I would, I'd spill the Coke. I won't lie. <laughs> I've been gassed a couple times off listening to Pusha. I feel like- No, oh. you haven't. Because we'll fight. <laughs> we will fight. I'm playing, man. <laughs> okay, cool. But it's the same But it's the same for the Griselda guys. And it's also like, when you listen to someone like a Juice World who did a song about basically depression, lucid dreams. Like, that doesn't mean I want to take 100 Zan and be that person. Mm. But it's interesting to hear that perspective from someone who does live that life because it's voyeurism. Mm. It's the same thing as white kids from the suburbs buying NWA albums because that's not something that they're used to. Mm. It's something that's exhibitionist there's mm -hmm. something that's voyeuristic about it um vince staples did a dope video for his senorita song where he's basically running in the hood from all these different character stereotypical characteristics of the hood and then when the video is done it pans out and it's white people watching it from like a museum so it's basically like the video was an exhibition to white people and I'll come see our world come see us niggas do yeah, nigger yeah, shit yeah. and shit like that it's kind of like that but again, we're talking about low level stuff like street life, like drugs, like this, yeah. that, and the other stuff that as grown people, we don't subscribe to, but it's cool to listen to. Mm. But when it comes to someone who outside of that is doing bad shit, like bad, really bad shit, then boy. Yeah. It's a weird one, man, because mm. I don't know, it's a proper weird one. Yeah, I mean, again, like it's it's very much it's very individualistic, very very individualistic. Like, I get what you you it depends on what like you listen to music for as well, man. Some yeah. people just like you can have it as background music, or some people actually you know use it to help them get through certain things in life. So it all depends, man. If you're trying to like, if it's for motivational purposes, then I guess you know it may be deeper than rap. But if it's just like pure entertainment, and you know. It's, like a Lucy in the background, then I guess it's not that bad, regardless of what it is. Um, you know I also it? feel like if we listen to people who subscribed to our moralistic standards, it wouldn't be as fun. 
Get boring after yeah, a while, but it wouldn't we'll, be, as be a lot of people that'll be cancelled. Because you man get onto me a lot, yeah, but I can't. I won't listen to Tav quite in a club. To, you would listen to nothing but Lecrae and Christian rap. <laughs> yeah, like oh, it, not even just music, comedian. Like Dave Chappelle's last comedy sketch just kind of cancelled because he made a couple of jokes. It'll be a weird world if people got cancelled left, right, and centre mm. for what they've done in the past. People who try to and also not, serious. not trying to minimize what people's done. Some people like I'm not going to try and minimize Peter Feeling. That's on another level. But like Chris Brown hit his girl. When he was what twenty one, are we going to hold that against him for the rest of his life? People will. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, I get it. But, like, but I mean, do we hold him that against that for the rest of his life? I've never hit a woman, but like, if I. But do you feel like you are, by listening to his music, knowing his reputation? Do you feel like you're strengthening the narrative? His like, let me write this right. By listening to him, knowing that he has his reputation, do you feel like you're part of the problem in making sure that this person who's seen in this way is still in the public eye? I mean, what, what what problem exactly though? Um, the problem of like That's the abuser, a problematic person making music, continuing to do to to. When well, I look at Chris Brown, I see someone that okay, cool, he done what he done, but I'm not trying to make it, not trying to minimize it. We all make mistakes. I mean, that would be the case if after he beat up Rihanna, he beat up a few more. Not even that. After he um, beat up Rihanna, he was he he wasn't sorry. Okay, or, yeah, or he wasn't. Um, out here like you know apologizing on every platform you know around mm. if he was out here you know not showing remorse and was like saying yeah i did it and what like and then still making music and we were like listening to his music and still championing him then yes we would be part of the problem but because he was like extremely remorseful um and you know even years following that his career took a hit and he was still on the same sort of vibe of being remorseful and trying to bounce back um, he his, was he, he was showing that he was kind of ready to grow from that. So I, I I didn't see any issue with it. I speak to a lot of um you know black women specifically that still don't fuck with Chris Brown, and I understand their reasons as well. But again, man, it's all it's all subjective. It's all relative. Subjective, bro. I don't think if you can separate the man and the music, more power to you because that's what you can do. Can I? Um, I don't know. It's a weird one. Sometimes. 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 It yeah, like, it's, a, it's a struggle I'm still fighting. It depends on the crime, innit? It depends on what they did. Yeah, and, but it's a struggle I still find. I'm not going to lie. Listen to R. Kelly's a struggle. Not listening um, to R. Yeah, no, yeah, not listening to R. Kelly's a struggle. Shh. I know R. Kelly's album cuts. I'm an R. Kelly fan. And you might know this. Like, it's a struggle to... If not, yeah, if if it comes out confirmed that Nas put hands on Khalees, I'm looking at him a different way. But, and, I'm, and I'm not consuming his music the same. 100% but, but you because talking? like abuse like physical abuse on women is up there for me as well but do you stop listening to him about 93% yeah that's how you, yeah, for, you. for sure because that's massive for me hmm. don't get me wrong I don't listen to Arkeley now it's not, I just need to clarify that I don't I'm just saying it's a struggle it's hard not to bro it's, man yeah, like, like I need people to say bro, I don't I don't Kels has up. got amazing yeah, music bro like I don't want people yeah. listening thinking I listen to Arkeley and, like I don't I'm just saying it's a struggle I'm just being realistic here it is a struggle not to listen to the aura. Let me rephrase that. It's not hard not to. It's just a shame that he done so much fucked up shit that I now can't. Let me ask you a lot of question. Why did and the become... fact that he was making certain bits of music to hide his fucked up shit. He says he said yeah, well, he said Ali and she uh, vibe. He did the uh, he you did because now I'm looking at Ali's music differently. The early Ali music, but he says Ali's name in vibe. AJ nothing but a number cute. is an amazing song, mm. but now I'm looking at it differently. Can't listen to that Outcast song where they sample it too. But like, let me ask you a question. Why is it a thing now with Arkeley? This guy was making music. No, it's always been a thing. It's always been a thing. But why was it so... Is well, it because of social media? A Me Too movement, women, women social media. Yeah, the context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the context. social media talking and about. And more information. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, you're right. Social media talking about as well, man. Yeah, man. I mean, Headstrong. the context around it has empowered a lot of women to come out. When before, they would have just been silenced the same way girls you. had been. I feel you. But again, I feel like I've, I'm never going to stop listening to Michael Jackson. So maybe I'm a hypocrite there. Even if it comes out that he was touching those kids? Um, it'd be just be completely honest. Mm. Don't think I'll stop listening to Michael Jackson. No, if it was confirmed. If it was confirmed, I, don't, I, I, I believe he's innocent. But like, but if it was confirmed, then yeah, I, I, I don't, I'll be honest with you, bruv. That's, like, Michael Jackson's my favourite artist of all time. I don't know if, ah, uh, bruv. But then he told us in his music, he might have done it. Listen, bro, for me. Did he? Would, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, shall I break it down for you, fam? Please do. He gave us Smooth Criminal. No, I love it, man. And then he said, you've been hit by clap, clap. Uh, Yuck. Edit that Yuck. out, <laughs> Edit that out. Oh, oh, no, man. we're letting this rock. We're letting this rock. I've got... Uh, listen, listen, all I've said is he, smooth criminal. So he told us what he was about. Well, you think MJ did it? 
I feel like he dipped his toes in the water. He was also what does that mean? T- he's trapped like in the closet. He, like he, like like he, he dipped his toes in the water. What does that mean? The people know that knows what that means. Knows nah, what that means. Be, come on. What, like, I, um, he slept I, with kids. I don't think he done. I don't think he. I don't Mo's think sitting it. on the fence. So you have a definitive answer. Mo's I don't sitting know. on the fence. I don't know. I generally he don't shared know. Beds then, with children. then if you don't know, then don't say anything. What do you mean? Like, don't say he dipped his toes in the water because you don't even know what that means. That means like, yo, he might have done it and he might have not. Have. So you're sitting on the fence. Hey man, no, dip you can't toes in the water means that he did it. Yeah, is that what it means? So it's either you you feel like he did he it, or he did one, it. but not like the sixteen that they said. That's what tip the nose means. Yuck, right? that's disgusting. This MJ topic needs to take place off the pod. Because um, <laughs> yeah. that's what I'm saying is it's deeper no, than, for me. It's no, deeper than like, rap. Yo, all I said is just listen to Smooth Criminal properly. Clap, clap. And then you lot yeah. get what I mean. Now you're gonna have people searching for stuff in Smooth Criminal that ain't even so, there. No, no, listen, people, just listen to Smooth Criminal and listen to it. But you'll still listen to him regardless, though. Um. It all, but if he came out that he done it like bona fide, like I don't want to be graphic, but like I don't know what they find, like whatever they find on him. Then if yeah. they find that he's a pedophile, like there's a tape. If it comes out that he's a pedophile, are you still listening to Michael Jackson? Um, no. Okay, no. Nobody's immune for me. No, no. It, that's no, true. No, nobody's, nobody's, nobody's yeah. But like, yeah, yeah no. But like, uh, yeah, no. Yeah, I'll stop listening to him. I'll stop listening. I think to him. with Nas, like, if it turns out that he was just banging Khalees. It'd be a gradual thing, but eventually I'd stop listening to him. So what's the, again, going back to the question, like where's the compass? Like what? It's blurred, what is there, bro. Like, what crime is a cutoff point? Pedophilia. Is, the, is murder a cutoff point? Rape. Um, if Nas murdered someone today, are you stopping listening to Nas? Nas, if he bodied someone today? Because I'm not. I want to say yes, but it's, it's difficult, man. I'm not. I won't lie to you. My favorite rapper could commit murder today. I won't stop listening to him. Yeah, it's different. But then am I a hypocrite for that? But is murder a bit more complicated? Yes, life is lost full stop, but the circumstances Depending on the backstory. And also, like, I feel like... I feel you, though. Murder, Because if it's self-defense. Pedophilia. Rape and pedophilia are there for me. That's one and two, though. That's, the, that's, that's, that's like... You know what I mean? That's like, yo... Pedophilia you, is number one. Yeah, and rape is on... It's one A one B, bro. Murder's like, number three. I, I can't... I don't Physical think. abuse on women is up there, too. That's in my top yeah. three. Oh, I forgot about that one, though, sorry. Yeah. But I would have counseled... Black Thought come out and say, yo, I mash up my wife. Yeah, nah, it's over for that. For real, yeah, for sure, one hundred percent. If Blackfoot beat up his wife, I'll listen to the same one that Blackfoot as I listen to now, which is none. You see what I done there? What you do? <laughs> that was a good one. I don't care what anyone says. Hey man, you started it. Um, did start it. You did start it. You mentioned his name. Why? You know what we do. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's that's very true. Uh, someone said Blackfoot went to work. Also, more no dangerous. one heard me when I said he'd lose his day job. But anyway. Um, <laughs> So I said, yo, you know Black Four went to drop. No, no, stop, 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 listen, stop, last drop, last drop. Black, Black Four went to work more times in the last week than I did. <laughs> That's probably not even true. Are you mad? He had to go to Jimmy Fallon last week. I was in Cyprus. Bro, how do you need, you don't even know what time Jimmy Fallon's on. So how, how do you it's know? Monday to Friday. You don't know. It's like what? It's, it's a Monday it's to Friday night, night show. Right? Yeah, bro, it's, it's not on show. every night. It is. It's Monday to, no, Friday, Monday to Friday, bro. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. It definitely ain't. Was they have the... off seasons, bro. Oh no, but oh, it's, they're on now. You feel dumb, didn't they're you? They're on now. Look at you. Or oh, NBA off season. Wait, was it off season? I don't know. No, this guy. I'm just saying he had to go to work. <laughs> but no, when it's off season, when it's on for... season, it's Monday to Friday. I don't know. What's, oh, no, it's a Monday to Friday show. Him, I don't know him. A um, couple others. What's his real name? Black Four. Why? Just so I got it. Tariq Trotter. Why? Trotter. Tariq Trotter. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, what's the problem? Hey man, grow up, man. Yo, something. let's go on to the next. He's gonna say something about peace. Chatting shit, bro. Hey, trotter, trotter, trotter. Anyway, <laughs> so clearly from what we've just spoken about, the moral compass is very blurry. Obviously, we can all agree on certain crimes just being unforgivable that we will stop listening to an artist. We will actively, I don't want to say the word, but cancel the artist because you fools are flipping ruining the word cancel. Um, but there are very there are various shades of grey when it comes to other things. Yeah. And it's not as easy to separate art for the artist for me as it might be for Peter or Mo or A, B, C person. But is there something wrong with the people, just one last, is there something wrong with people that can separate the man and the artist and the, the man and the no. music? I think it depends on the crime and yes, I look at them differently. If you're able to still enjoy R. Kelly's music despite all these horrible atrocities, oh, yeah. uh, I'm looking at you sideways for sure. Do your I, thing. I'm judging. I don't think I don't. I'm not. <laughs> if if you listen to R. Kelly, I'm not. I don't judge. Just because I'm not judging how, the no, shit out of that person. Because no, yeah, I know again, how again. I know how hard I find it. it so yeah, I'm not judging someone. That it depends on the level of the crime. Someone like a Kanye, 
Fuck cool. If it's right. a party that you walk into and R. Kells is playing, cool, fine. But if you actively so go to your question. iTunes so wait, or wait, wait, whatever wait. streaming service you use, so if R. Kelly comes and you pick, yo, you know what? You today I'm gonna content. listen to I'm, I'm gonna listen to "Feeling on Your Booty" by R. Yeah, Kelly. Yo, I'm judging the fuck out of you. Sorry, <laughs> I've got a question for you. Go on. If R. Kelly came on at the wedding, would you have started dancing? Have I had a couple of drinks? Bro, you, I've seen. Would you start dancing? Yes or not? Yes. We've I mean, all rocked out yes. to R. Kelly at that's concrete. A yes. That's a yes. There's not two ways about it. We have. That's a yes. I'm not trying to throw it in the bus. Are you not crazy? No, since the documentary came out, I have. Bro, we was in concrete. And yeah, we there was a day when Vibe came when? on. I mean, in we concrete. Vibe and I was vibing. Yes, was, and me, us, all we started us. dancing. We was Wait. like, fuck it. Yeah. We said, fuck it. And all started dancing That's different though, bro. This was in concrete. I promise you. That's different though. I'm not act. I won't actively go and select his music. But then, what's the difference between li- enjoying him on a night out and going to listen to his music? Because either way, you're liking his on a music. night out, no, you don't have a no, choice. You're actively making a choice outside. So of, on, wait, you're actively making a choice to listen to R. Kelly when you're on your ones, just in the room chilling. So I can but, vibe to him in a wedding or like a party, but I can't vibe to him with him by myself. You're not in control of what's going on. Are you going to go to a wedding and be, to a DJ and be like, "Yo, cut no"? What well, I'm saying, if they play him and I dance and I sing every bar, it's not as bad. It's but it's like, the same shit. It was not. I probably won't sing the words, but I might just like, you know. Nod no, no, we was enjoying the day he came on. Like vibe. Concrete. Yeah. I don't know the words to vibe, so. I said, vibe, <coughs> vibe. I get what you mean though, because. Either way, you're enjoying that, it, yeah. since, I mean, since since that documentary came out, apart from the time you've told me, which I don't remember, every time someone, even the time someone's played, a DJ's played, I'll tell you, I have not danced. That's male DJs and female DJs. I'm not going to be honest with you. I can't, I can't. If he comes on a club, sort of, in all honesty, I would dance. Yeah, but like again, like I, I don't expect anyone to think of us as like holier than thou people who are gonna cancel someone just off the rip. Like we're all people. Like we all have our thresholds. We all have our compasses. I know there are loads of people who have the same internal struggles as us, and that's gonna continue to be. Yeah, like it's stupid to think like who, yeah. like let's be honest. It, it will take a little. If someone's your favorite musician, it's gonna take a little while yeah. for you to count. You're not. I if just you know if Jay Z today was a serial domestic that like beat up Beyonce in a race. I'm going to stop listening to him. Mm. It's going to take me a little while. So why is it so crazy that it's taking me a little while to cancel R. Kelly? No, I'm not saying, crazy, I'm crazy saying the our audience, if they hear me listen to R. Kelly, they're going to look at me like, what's wrong with this guy? Mm. Not knowing that I went from listening to him, say every day to... Right. Black people week. are still buying R. Kelly tickets. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Yo, la- life is a legit boondocks episode, man. Bruh. Facts. And on that note... That was a good topic. Let's move on to the next was topic, yeah. the final topic. Um, Done some heavy shit now. Now let's do some fun. You'll notice, audience, that every third topic is always a fun one. So just to line it up, just to line it up a little bit, because you know we've been on our on our quad for today. But um, yeah, I guess we wanted to talk about rappers who have fallen off, and you know there's been loads of them. So whether they've been whether they've had like a limited run of like monster singles or whatever, or they've had like dope albums and then you just never see them or hear from them again, or they're not making the same quality level music. Um, yeah, man, there are loads of rappers who have fallen off across these years. And let's pick some of our favorite ones. Oh, man. I've got a few. Uh, do you want to go first? Oh, oh, you want me to go first? Okay, cool. Uh, number one, Fetty Wap. Fetty Wap. Was that a big fall off though? Yo, I Fetty was, was running out Fetty at one point. Wap in 2014, F- you could have told My Fetty Way, nothing. Trap Queen, my way remix with Drake, Trap and then he dropped the album. The album was horrible, but after that, <laughs> disappeared. But like Fate had a, run. he ran the summer. He ran that summer. Fate had a hundred percent, and he was like, he was like in talks with Kanye, I think, I believe, or like Kanye was a fan, and he was like showing him around and shit. He like, I think they performed together, so he was definitely on the rise, man. Definitely on the rise. Of course, his run wasn't that long, but when you come in the game with two monster hits. Another one is a remix of another monster hit featuring the biggest rapper in the he world. He had a couple of more. Did he? He brav. Fetty had like four. Yeah. He had, hold on, let me go to it. Fetty had a brav. Mm. Fetty was the hot shit at one point. Like, Yeah, well, I mean, I, and, and it speaks to how mad he fell off. Because yeah, he had My Way, he Trap had, Creed, he, 679. Yeah, he had so many, of the, like, so many of those hits. And now, like, he barely is even a blip on the radar. So what happened then? Again, he had, fuck, you know. What happened? Um... I guess he just exhausted all of his work. I think and when he, you sorry to cut you off, and when you say fall off, do you mean from um, mainstream or just making music or making good music? Or because I feel like we need to actually even define like, what you mean by falling definition? off. For me, falling off, um, 
typically it might just mean from making good music. But I think for the sake of this conversation, I'm talking more from the mainstream eye. Oh yeah, in that case, yeah. He fell off. He, he, okay. he fell off. Basically, when the album came out, he didn't have any other hits because he had exhausted all of his hits before the album came out. And then it soon became apparent that he wasn't that great at making music. <laughs> yeah, he just had, maybe. He, he maybe got lucky with three amazing hits, mm. but he had nothing else. And then he naturally just fell off the radar. Right. And that might not necessarily be his fault because again, like we live in a culture where you have one big hit, you're you're propelled, you're, and you're not even a full artist yet. I still, well, I don't know if he's trying to find himself. Still. Oh, he's done. He's done. He's I don't know if he's still trying to find himself as an artist, but he got so much so soon mm. that now that he's not doing anything, you have to consider it a fall off. So is the window gone for him to? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's five it's, it's, years later. It's, it's a wrap for now. It's a wrap for you. It's done. Right. He had a great song with Bad Nose Had 6 9 by the way. Did Kiki, he? Kiki. With A Boogie and Hoodie. A Boogie. Fate What Was In That? Fate What Was In That? That album was horrible. Okay. Which album? Kiss, it was the first album, not the second one. Takashi's. I got one. Remember Cassidy? Cassidy. Oh, don't do that. Cassidy. Bro, Cassidy fell off. Cassidy the greatest had, rapper of Cassidy had hot Hotel, My Drink and My Two Step, I'm a Hustler. B-Boy Stance. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cassidy at one point was that making, song with Mashonda. That's uh, get, no, get no better. Get no better. Cassidy was on. He was bubbling and the song with the R as well. He was bubbling at one the point. Hotel, one, yeah. hotel. And then, Yo, he was my favorite rapper. Yeah, but like he man. fell off. Whether we like it or not, no one could tell me nothing. No, about but whether Cassidy we like it or not, he fell off. Yeah, he did. You know what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't his fault though. I mean, I had, uh, he had a car crash. Uh, cool, that's his fault. And then he wait, had wait, like wait. he had amnesia. That's his fault. Wait, 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 what? Yeah, he had a car crash, bro. And he got amnesia. Yeah, he told, he told him drive like a maniac. After I'm a hustler. Yeah, he had a car crash, and he, and he stopped hustling. Oh. Yeah, that comedic time was. He amazing. forgot. He, I mean, he, he 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 forgot to, didn't he? Yeah, he forgot to. You know what I'm saying? He and, then he, and then he didn't get no better. <laughs> Yo, that's so bad. I don't think he stayed in any hotels during that time period. Nah, I don't think so as well, fam. And because he got into a car crash, he couldn't drink a two step. <laughs> That's all of his songs done. <laughs> Yo, Mo, I want to punch you. <laughs> <laughs> Great wordplay. You should be a rapper, Mo. Yeah, you oh, listen, fam. I've been saying that. Feel you. I've been um, saying that. I've got one. Death Row Records is a staff record label and a motherfucking crew. And if you're down with bad boys, <laughs> the fuck you, Gino XL. Bruv, for me, Death Row is like one of the biggest like travesties ever. Look at who they had. I'm not gonna... They had Tupac, they had Snoop, they had Dre. Y'all not gonna lie, yeah. and that's, that's where it stops. That's where it stops. Yeah. Yo, that's a, but that's great. That, that outlaws. I never thought of a whole record. That's dope. You actually fucking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, after two back died, it was a wrap. No, nah, because they still had Snoop. Yeah, yeah but, but then there was Snoop the whole was the, funny. Snoop did one album with them, right? I think Dog, the Dog Father, which was horrible. Yeah. After Doggy Star, yeah, the Dog Father, yeah. And then he left, right? And then he left. Yeah. Dre left. So, Dre left early. Yeah, Dre left. Quite Dre left early. early. Dre left. But then like, I think they still had Dog Pound. Okay. Yeah, but they were never really gonna be. They weren't. Gonna I mean, Daz was making a lot of. Bro, it's like one hundred percent. Yo, it's like the outlaws. They were never gonna be what they no, were. Don't when... say it's that. like the outlaws. Who no, the it's outlaws? not. Stop that. <laughs> the dog pound and the outlaws are not the same, man. The dog Yo. pound had Daz and flipping um, corrupt. corrupt. Corrupt, bro. Oh, yeah, come yeah, on, man. Bugging, don't bugging. do that. Shout out to Gaddafi, though. Bro, from outlaws. Yeah. Anyway, rest um, in peace. But yeah, Death Row Records. That was a bad one because at that particular moment, it was you could argue that they were like the biggest label in the world. You they, were, they, they were, they were, they you know were, they were. So rap to label. go from that to nothing, I know Tupac passed away and then Snoop left, but you would think that that label still had enough, you know, money generated where they could sign some decent acts. I don't think they had a backup plan. I mean, yeah, Sugar, the boss yeah. went to jail. I don't <laughs> also, like, but also, I feel like, I feel like Death Row was poorly organized and poorly structured Yeah, because they put all their money on Tupac and then once he was out of the picture, what's left? I don't think there yeah. was. I don't think there was much good management there. I think it was a lot of mismanagement. I think Suge Knight. I mean, he's the boogeyman of rap, isn't it? Brav, he like, was just a road man that found the record label, man. That's it. That's literally where it was, and he ran it like that. He mm. bullied. He ran it to the ground. He ran it to the ground. I fought Suge, man. So it was very much of his time. And to be honest, how long could we say that it was really like the best, the, like the top rap label in the world? Was it during like Tupac's time, like from um, NWA? Because I feel it wasn't like they, for that long. I think it was involved. They weren't number one though. I feel like they were involved. They weren't number one though. Because that's no when way. that's when Suge kind of strong armed um I think the contracts of 
Jerry to a few of the members of NWA. Okay, so from early nineties. Yeah, I'd but say so. Yeah, but they weren't number. I feel like they were number one. One when. Yeah, I don't think they were one, number one. I think they point. were number one from the minute um, Dre dropped Chronic. Fair enough. When um, did Doggy Style come out as well? Uh, 93. 93. Oh yeah, was that on Death Row as well? Yeah. Oh, so it was okay. Chronic. Okay, you've got, so what were you saying? 90, and then back, Tupac. So you say about 92 to 96? Yeah, you could argue. Four years. I'm going to always say bad boy just because of, you know, my But the fact that he's in your conversation is mad. Yeah. So you're right, I see, because bad boy's still a thing now. Do you know what I'm saying? Not, yeah, well, not really, is it? No, but like, it's still you bad still know not really no we still know the name you still know you still know the name you still know I mean who what artists are a bad boy that are still Fresh, active French Montana eh, not really though is he Machine Gun Kelly piss keep, off you'll keep him keep him keep him keep him MGK you'll keep him MGK keep him. he says he can rap said, which, fine anyway you pick him. he can next, rap alright no, bro we pick keep, next said, magica, <laughs> keep Magica away from MC me. Hammer can't touch this MC Hammer fell off hard because he was very much the vanguard of pop rap in the early 90s especially with like can't touch this and shit like that um and then people just cussed him so hard. Like everyone from like Zev Love X, soon to be known as MF Doom, dissed him. Tribe Called Quest dissed him. Everyone who was real hip hop at the time didn't think he was authentic. And then I heard he, he was a real G though. I, I heard that too. Yo, no, 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 he's bite, bite. I heard he's really Yo, bad I think DJ Envy was saying the story. Yo, MCI was meant to be a bite, bite. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. But then he And dropped... I think he was low key death row at one point. I think he was financing them, right? I don't know, but he was like. But it's from the men's though, wouldn't it? Because I think his brothers are blood, so yeah, I think he had a lot of blood yeah, yeah. behind him, and obviously Sugar was a blood, so I feel like he was like tied in with that man somehow. Yeah, yeah he was from the men's, uh, so. Yeah, but he he so had sure. he had a he had a run with singles and shit, and then he kind of just faded away. He dropped one album, I think it was called. Um, Can't touch this. No, the funky headhunter. I think that was his second album, and it was it was like a poo crumb in the toilet. It made <laughs> that much. It made shit. that much impact. It Yo, made that much impact. Where did this guy ever find that saying, that was bro? was mad vivid. A poo covered a carpet? In the toilet. Oh, in the toilet. Yeah, because I meant to know that. <laughs> Where'd Where you get carpet though from? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, poo covered the toilet. Okay. <laughs> what? Anyway, I got someone. Yeah. I got someone. To me, this guy had the image. I don't know why I always give back and for saying the name. This guy should have been, had the image of being maybe the biggest rapper. Like at one point. Drew Santana. Ooh. Because remember he had a whistle song? Yeah. He had Old Boy. Yeah. And he had one more, Back to the Crib, I think. Which Old Boy wasn't his song, but I feel you. But you know what? He, yeah, he's yeah. he shone on that. With really like, and then he had, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the whistle. You know that whistle song? Yeah, I remember the whistle song. Yeah. yeah. And then I think he had Back to the Crib come out a couple years later. Yeah, but I feel like before Back to the Crib was that, his like- That was his- Yeah, no, no. Yeah. That's my point. From there to there, he should have been should've that done guy. something, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like Joel Santana never ever- Oh, yeah. But with Jewels, I know <laughs> what happened there. There was some contractual issues there where I think when Cam left, I think Cam left Rockefeller. No, Rock, I think Dipset left Rockefeller. Hold on, let me get this right. Basically, it was during the Rockefeller breakup. So when Jay, and Jay went to be president at Def Jam, I think um, they took Jewels' con. I think Cameron sold Jewels' contract to Def Jam. So I think there was some contractual issues there where because of the beef between Cam and Jay, it was a bit hard for Jewels to just come out and do his music. And then I think he had legal issues as well. So I don't, and so I think he had, and he had a drug it. addiction. I'm just saying he had, a, to me, he had, he had the biggest song and he just never made music again right. that we cared about. Yeah. But yeah, Jewels was he, had, he had red tape around him rather than like making music that just didn't stick. He did not have the opportunity to. Fair enough. In a way. I mean, a by the way, yeah, he off, dropped right? that mixtape that I loved in 2012, by the way. I forgot what it was called, but he had a dope mixtape in 2012. I can't remember. With but the white yeah. background. A fall off is a fall off, isn't it? Regardless yeah. of what happened. Yeah, he fell off. Unfortunately. Hold that big one. Um, I was going to say Mace, but I don't think- Pass the Mace. But I don't think he was on for long enough to have fallen off, but- Long enough. I mean, from period. Harlem World and all the singles that he had with Puff to being a pastor and doing nothing- yeah, yeah, coming back in the game, like, and then coming back, yeah, it's a bit of a fall off. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a fall off. Yeah. Like you just said, a fall off, a fall off, and he fell off in a lot of ways, man. Not just the music, credibility, like source, swag. No, no, no we're not going to say source and swag. I mean, credibility, yeah. I mean, look, but he's credibility corny. and source, it's one of the same. He's corny. Once you go to the church and then come back, and then try to be a guy, try to be a bad boy with it as well. How you go be a pastor, come back and try to be a bad boy? Because he came back and signed to fifty. If I don't slap the collection plate in your face, bro, you're a fool. But um, yeah, a fall off is a fall off, man. I think like he, as far as I, it's probably going to be a bit, a bit rude, but as far as like 
rappers with like the least cred- credibility I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Why you got to do that? Mace like, is top two and he's not two. He's oh, number one. Man. He's number one. He's number one. <laughs> Corny motherfucker. <laughs> no, bro. But it's the fact that he keeps coming to and from. He keeps coming back and then leaving. Bruv, one day he's what TV he Jakes, doing, then bro? one minute he's bloody um, Mace. Murder, on, Mace. Murder. murder Mace. How you go from TD Jakes to Murder Mace? He was to always murder, to murder Mace. Mace. He was he was murder, but P Diddy named him Pretty. Oh, P God. Diddy named him Pretty. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole number question for another day. <laughs> Facts. How you wrapped that another grown man called you Pretty? Facts. No, nah, basically you, what? No, 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 I don't want a backstory. You ain't gonna let me clean nah, it up. No, 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 you better go give the word of God. What is he doing now? <laughs> Nothing. Magic. I don't know what he's doing. Look at that. Bum. Didn't Cameron say that like Diddy would hide like? Or Mace would hide dildos in Diddy's apartment. <laughs> yo, I'm not gonna lie. Yo, Cam, this convo's gonna yo, Cam said a man. We ain't Cam gonna do this how, to Mace. Cam said, yo, like Diddy was all up in Mace's ass, bruv. Nah, bro. Allegedly, nah, allegedly, stop allegedly, it, allegedly, stop allegedly, it. allegedly, allegedly. I can't allegedly. let you man allegedly. do this to Mace, man. <laughs> I mean, I love Mace. Mace, 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 Mace,
Yeah, it was contractual shit with Rich, Rich Homie Corn, I think. I think, Any yeah, personal problems as well. You can guess who with the contractual problem was with as well. The fucking, Cash money. Fucking bastard that don't pay no one additional. Shout out, um, man. No shout my, my last one... Stupid motherfucker. Is, um, might be a bit controversial. Oh, boy. Eminem. <sighs> um, I, I feel as though after <sighs> the Marshall cool. Brothers LP, I feel like he kind of... Fell off. Um, the Eminem show was it was okay, okay, but it wasn't <sighs> it wasn't not, the not heights doing, in it. We're so we're not, we're not doing this, you could argue that it was a, it was a falling off. So we're not doing this. Yeah, my pick is Marshall. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I think, Safi tells me we're gonna, sorry. I think from all four onwards, you can say that. I don't think from Eminem show you could say that. Eminem show was amazing. I love Eminem show. Eminem show was amazing yeah, to me. That's me. But Safi tells me we're gonna talk about Eminem more next episode. I feel that way too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just feel as though M fell off. Um, so that's one well, of the biggest fall offs for me. Um, yeah. yeah, I just feel like the quality. You of mean music the quality of music, not him as a person? No, 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 no. His 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 popularity. He been probably clear. never. Yeah, went, yeah, yeah it? that's but, what I'm saying. Um, no, his quality. Of yeah, music. his quality of music. Yeah. Um, yeah, he fell off in that respect. And I then, feel like though he's been rapping about more or less the same shit for twenty years. So. Is it really a fall off? No, this guy Kamikaze is literally talking about. Guy, he's always he's, made yeah. To I white think girls. he's always made fun of celebrities. He's always made, made fun of his wife. Yeah. he's always done this, that. You know he's saying? never grown. Our favorite eyes have grown with them. But music. you man are Eminem's talking about the them. content. I'm talking more as far as his his skill level and his production. You don't think I it's feel improved? like skill wise, he's not as nice as he once was. I feel like production wise, it's just not as good as it once was, and. That's that equals a fall off for me. Oh, he's never been a good producer. I don't think anyway. He's been an okay producer. He produced Renegade. I thought that was quite good. Okay. With Jay Z. Like, it's not it's not setting the world on fire. Yeah. That's what that, that's probably what I mean. Um and, ever, and since he's been taking over production duties, like I've never really seen him as that guy. Um as far yeah. as skill goes, I see what you mean. Because the there was a period where you could argue that, yo, this guy no, is the, the best but I think rapper it's, alive. Uh, easily. But, I also, think, Early but I also think that's because it was more focused. Whereas now, I think he's just doing it because he can and there's no real focus to it. Right. So something like a rap god, the song Rap God, what's he really doing on it? He's boasting about the fact that he finally thinks he's a rap god. Right. And anything he does, like the, the Conway tune as well, like it's like, it's nothing really there. Whereas before it was a little more substance to it. I miss the old M man when he used to freestyle with Royce. I miss the old M man. Let's not uh, talk too much about him, innit? But yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll talk about it like, probably soon. I feel like he's yeah, still, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I've, I also had Scorcher as well. I felt like he kind of fell off as well, man. I feel that was a period Is where, that his like, fault? Or was that more of the um, life he was yeah, involved in? Yeah, it is his fault. I thought partly it is his fault. He had legal issues. He couldn't stay out of trouble. Um, and I don't know what was happening with the label, but um, I just feel as though musically he just was also again not maturing like his his counterparts like someone like a wretch for example man like the way they grew i always thought scorcher could do the same i think i've said this on a previous episode that i always felt like scorcher had that commercial viability as well just for some reason he just never he just never went there um so just from where he was at when he released um the dark knight i just felt like he dipped after that man he never like and even lips and thing he just dipped he just wasn't as present he just dipped man so yeah, I count it as a fall off for me. Fair enough. Yeah, but you got anyone else? I ain't got no more UK ones. I ain't got no UK ones. I ain't got UK ones because I feel like the person I was going to say was big in Tottenham, not in Big Ed. That out of London. And, as we, all, and, and person, as we all know, the world is don't a lot bigger. Don't say that person, man. And as we all know. They didn't even fall on. No, and as we know, the world is a lot bigger than Tottenham. You're very childish. Bro. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so wait, you man can get a black thought and mace and I can't get at your boy. No, because this person will catch you in London. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't going to catch me. Do you know what? Um, you know, you can keep this in. I don't mind. I didn't know him. I knew him. Can we just say his name? A double S. Thank you very much. Shout out to Double S. Did she? Yeah. My thing. Double S one of the nicest in... Did she know him or know him? I don't know. Okay. Double S one of the nicest that ever touched the UK. But he I felt like him, but then I realised he was never... I feel like pe- rappers, rap, like people that know rap knew Double S. Mm. But that's more of the episode before was like who never reached the heights rather than who fell off. Do you know what I mean? He didn't, he didn't fall off, man. That's why I said- He never I reached just, the heights no, or fell off. That's why I just said, the episode we said yeah. who never reached the heights, they should have, I said double S. He doesn't fit in this one because he never was fully on. So really he's just in the middle. 
Um, he's not even there. Below the middle. He's, not, he's not even there. Shout out to him though. Like, Still I'm, incredibly talented. He's top. He did a he's top, song he's, with he's top 20 recently. for me. That's, top, that's the whole another conversation. He's top 20 for you. Yeah. yeah. All, all around. UK? Yeah. I'm biased as fuck. No, nah, but park your that. bias though, man. That's another conversation. We'll talk about that. After. Right, cool. But he is top 20, top 30. Oh, it's a nice top 30. <laughs> Uh, that's cool. Are we talking artists or just rappers? Just rapping. Okay. If we're talking just rapping, he's top 20, I'm sorry. Just rapping along. Just sheer rap. But yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to, I really want to think of someone in the UK that for, fell off. But I can't think of anyone. I can't think of anyone. Yeah, either. because not a lot have fallen on. Not yeah. I mean, that's, that's again, the thing, like, man. Like, I've got some. There hasn't I, been that many. I can think of someone that fell off. What? Did Dizzy fall off? I want to say. In terms of music making, yeah. I do want to say someone, but they're legends. Who? Be real, be honest. Because like. Let me okay, give, I've got one too. And you man are gonna be shot by this. Let me give you one. Yeah, me might punch me. Let me say something. That's also Solid Crew. They hit the heights with 21 seconds. Yeah, but did the, they fall off? Uh, in nah. all honesty, did Soul Solid fall off? Because you were you can't tell me that they don't know about my crew. Was Gar- it, uh, yeah. Gar- Garage fell off. No, no, no. Wait, you didn't like that song? It was a banger, but it didn't hit. It's not it was never gonna be 21 seconds. Going back to the 50 conversation. But my point is they fell off. He was the never gonna do an true, in the club again. But you can't tell me Soul Solid hype wasn't done very quickly. That's because Garage So died. Solid Hype was done very quickly. Bro. But 21 Seconds Garage? I'd say so. Nah. So you think that's more Garage than I don't, so think, solid? I don't think that counts as Garage. Because I think So Solid seconds. fell off quick, quick. 21 Seconds is definitely Garage. No, So Solid. I'm saying So Solid fell off quick for me. 21 Seconds ain't Garage. 21 Seconds is Garage. And that's a conversation for another time, but I feel like they fell off. It's got the two-step elements. It's Garage, bro. I don't know, man. It's it's let me listen to it again. Yo, it's it's definitely, from what I remember, I don't think it's Garage. I'll play for you. It's definitely it's Garage. But I feel like they fell off. And it's I don't know. They're legends, don't get me wrong. They're untouchables. But like... But they were very... They well, I like get it, quick, but they were quick, very quick. much of their time. And at that time, like no black artists were doing what they were doing. So you feel it was just a moment where they couldn't help Yeah, them. man. Yeah. I don't... But I get it. I get what you mean. But at the same time, a lot of things... Like Mega Man's gun charge? Yeah. Asha yeah, D went in prison yeah. as well. Did, did Mega Man actually do time? I can't remember. I know Asha D did. I know Asha did, yeah. So it might have just been that moment in time they couldn't help it no matter what they'd done. Yeah, I feel like, yeah. Shout out to them though. The reason I didn't want to say them is because they're legends, but... I think similar to what Yemi said, it was just that time in it because even Oxide and Neutrino, like, after they did what they did, like, they just... Bah, bah. No disrespect, but... Who was you going to say that he was going to punch you for? Oh, um, for about two years, Kano fell off. After... Um, just two years? You could argue London Town was the, fo- the beginning of the fall off. I enjoyed that album. And so did I. Okay. Well, I was, you could argue it. You could argue it. If not London Town, then after that. There was Method to My Madness. 140 Grime Street. Yeah, 140 Grime Street, I think, was him returning to his roots. Yeah. But Lon- uh, Method to My Madness was a, was a fall off for me. And London Town, although I enjoyed parts of it, it yeah, nah, just weren't it for me. Shout out to KE and all. He's still the GOAT, though. And I still need to listen to his new shit. Hoodies All Summer. Very good album. That's bare music out, bruv. Yes. If I show you the list of mu- albums that I need to listen to. That being said, I think, I think Stormzy's one's coming out in a couple of weeks. Oh, well. for real? Yeah, 16th, I think. I've got to listen to his first Rich one Rich first. Rich dropped though. a new single as well. I think, that's, I think an album's coming this year. I've got to listen to Stormzy's first one first. Shit. Say what? I've got to listen, listen to Stormzy's. Because his new album's coming out, I've got to listen to his first one because I didn't listen to it. You do, you do, you do. I like it. I put it on my list. It was decent. Yeah, I think I liked it. It was decent. I probably enjoyed his first album. Okay, I'll have a listen anyway. Can't watch the uh, Big Free Boots video anymore because my jam is in it. Yeah, he can't watch it, okay. For you. All right, guys, we're going to end it. <laughs> <laughs> you laughing at <laughs> Your mo's a bastard. I can't win, bro. I didn't even do nothing, man. All right, guys, we're going to end it there. So thank you very much for listening once again. If you want to follow us and uh, see what we're doing on the socials, we're on at Rhyme Dimes. Yeah. Wait, Rhymes Dimes Pod. At Rhymes Dimes Pod. Um... And yeah, we will see you in a couple weeks' time. And boys, if you don't have any more final thoughts, salute to everyone. You're gonna sign off with your salute to Chris and me. Oh yeah, shit. Motivational messages. Oh, you better think of one, bruv. Oh shit! All right. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, this is a thing now, man. (laughs) It's like good is good. Um, Right. Okay. Last week it was um, keep your. Enemies for keep, keep friends, friends close, close, side chicks close. Yeah, that was dope. Okay, guys. So now we've become accustomed to my motivational messages. They're now a thing now, thanks to these two gentlemen. Um, I'm gonna leave you with this one. It's all fun and games until the man them rub your shoes. <laughs>
kill you. Peace. <laughs> Oh, uh, bro, that was so stupid. Oh, man. It's all fun and games to be. Crips get robbed. Wait.